Hi, I'm Kevin Vermeulen, um, Academy Manager and Head of Scouting. How long have you worked here, Kevin? This is my 17th season oh, already, wow. yeah. So did you, did you start in scouting and work your way through? Or you... uh, no, I actually started in, in coaching 17 years ago. I, I was the head coach of the under-12s and afterwards had a good connection with the technical director, uh, Jean Kimmermans, and started out as his uh, assistant in, in, in a project managing role. I uh, founded together with, with, with Jean the Purple Talents program. And uh, yeah, we did some projects uh, in the academy, uh, basically professionalizing everything. And um, now one of, uh, one of my main topics in the academy is uh, talent recruitment, so talent ID and, and recruitment. So, uh, okay, so tell us a little bit about how that works within the city. For example, uh, we saw the under eights yesterday, very talented young group. Um, how do you go around, how did you go about recruiting those guys? Um, we have the big benefit or the big luck, I would say, that, that we are uh, in the center of Belgium. So within, I would say, in norm, normal non-traffic non jam hours, we're within one and a half hour drive. I think we can reach 90% of Belgium. So Belgium is a quite small country, so that helps. Um, and basically, we're, we're uh, organized in, in three uh, different blocks. So you've got the 5-5, five, five, under 8s, under 9s. You've got the 8v8 uh, playing method, and that's under 10, 11, 12. And then you've got uh, S from under 13, 11v11. 11 11. So we have three coordinators, uh, and, and we tackle scouting or, or recruitment in a uh, talent identification in a different way. Basically, uh, in 5.5, five, we were organized uh, with, a, with a big, big focus on, on Brussels, and I would say 30 kilometers around Brussels. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think we, we scout very regional. We also have a Purple Start program. So it's basically uh, the indoor hall where uh, young boys can come and train uh, free uh, and, and they can just have a taste of, the, of the, the, the way of working within the academy. It's quite large scale. Sometimes we have 100, 120 guys coming over doing some drills and so on and just enjoying themselves. Logically, our own uh, trainers, coaching staff is involved and, and they detect uh, nice talents with the big accent on good movers. So right. uh, being agile, quick, uh, having a good sense of your own body, uh, mm. yeah, fluent movers, that's the basic. And then I think uh, learning how to play soccer, that's something we, we, we learn them within, within our academy. And uh, so that, that, that open, that's open to everybody, right? That, that yeah. Sounds, it's free for anybody to come, any six, seven-year-old yeah. come, and then you identify the best talent. From yeah, so we don't have an elite under seven. Uh, it starts as from under eight, but it's still quite young. Uh, and I think the big benefit uh, or the big... The big uh, difference with with other academies maybe maybe in the rest of europe is that we 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 try to recruit at the youngest age possible we train a lot i think those guys train three four times a week already plus a game so it's quite a lot and and as from a young age we we often have very very strong uh groups um, and then logically as from the age of uh, under nine under ten when we go to uh, 8v8 so under tens we have a very, very organized uh, scouting where we have two scouts per uh, age group and where we scout already nationwide uh, because we play, uh, we play quite quick against the better uh, other academies. And then, yeah, uh, we try to always uh, recruit the, the best talents uh, from other elite academies. Um, I think in the UK it's different because there, there's a lot of reglementation geographically a uh, much bigger country but here it there is a real yeah i, I call it sometimes and, and it's not a, not always a good thing the war for talent mm. so ourselves but other elite academies uh, yeah we, we we have a quite big scouting force so i think we're about 22 till 24 scouts divided into three blocks uh, putting everything in a database filtering this weekend we have um, meetings with uh, the scouts 5v5 where we where we talk about profiles and where we filter filter where we go again to 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 try to um, 
to see them even even more in depth uh, analyzing the individuals but but we are very severe it's very hard to get into the underlight academy and and we always work in the long term so so if uh, pure uh, theoretically we have a guy that's worth i would say we don't work like that but i, I would say that's a six out of ten we don't change him for a seven out of ten because we know that the seven out of ten will not reach the first team as well so we try to 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 work with him and develop him towards an eight it's only when we see exceptional talent that we go in uh, i would say full force and we try to convince parents to 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 sign for underlate with a clear um, proposal we always say uh, we see football as an individual sport eh? so academy is an individual sport and we always draw a triangle or a pyramid uh, if you want with on top school football and family because we know that uh, out of experience um, more or less 20 percent will become professional football player that's quite a lot but it also means that 80 percent will not uh, 20 percent out of from the from what age group i would say in in general out of our generations so if you have your under nines you, ex you anticipate 20 percent of those guys becoming professional yeah I, I wouldn't i wouldn't count as from under nine because the the pathway is too long yeah. i would say as from under 13 under 14 that's a quite quite honest percentage but logically between under nine and under 13 14 there is already some some transition transition but we try to work in the in the long term we always say if you come to Anderlecht you always come for at least two seasons so uh, we, we stability is the key word and, and then uh, regarding our proposal to par parents we always take into account school football family so if we convince a boy to come to Anderlecht we always uh, also have uh, in-depth uh, talks with parents and with, with the kid to, to assess uh, school level family situation because uh, as from the age of under 13, logically, if you, if you live far away, there is border school or guest family involved, uh, you need to s switch schools. So we also, um, we also invest a lot in, in uh, pedagogical department. So we have five people, full-time people, taking care of the boys, not in, in, in football, but on, only school, family, and the balance between those three uh, domains. Um, um, how often do you recruit from other academies, other big clubs? Is it easy to take a player from another big club, like a competitor, or is it in England it's very difficult because Cat won? Yeah. If a big club, Arsenal can't take a player from Tottenham, they have to leave first and then come. There's yeah. lots of regulation. What's the lot of I'm, like? I'm more or less aware of the, the regulation in England. It's quite severe. Yeah. I would say here in Belgium there is no regulation, so it's quite... Um, I wouldn't call it the Wild West, but it's, it's like I mentioned, uh, it's, it's, it's the war for talent at the young age. Logically, logically you, are, you are somehow uh, geographically limited. Uh, we won't go for a guy uh, that's nine years old at the other side of the country. It's, it's better that he develops in his own environment. But uh, it's, quite, yeah, it's, the, the, it's quite competitive. Um, logically, we're under it. We have our tradition. Uh, and... Uh, uh, if you look at the, the guys coming out of these, uh, this academy, every year we have some, some quite uh, famous names uh, or guys that now play for the national first team. So, so I think our, our history helps, but also uh, the way we approach those guys, we, we don't go for quantity, we really go for quality. And if, if we are not sure that the guy, and that's all, also the thing we ask our scouts, has this guy uh, the potential to reach professional football? If they are doubting, we don't do the transfer. I know uh, often it, it doesn't realize uh, itself as well, but, but if we go for a guy, we really need to be convinced that it's, it's a guy that could reach professional football. We do everything within our power to reach that goal. If it's not, no problem, but we are sure that the guy has a school degree and that he has uh, learned proper values in life, like uh, discipline, uh, proper education, respect for everybody. Those are very important values. Yeah, I noticed as well when I'm watching the under eights group, or all your groups really, there's a real mix of ethnicities. It's very diverse, representative of the city, I imagine, living. It reminds me of the, you know, the London clubs. 
you know, London clubs as well have all players from many different backgrounds, you know, and is that, do you think that's an advantage for you, that, that, and is there any challenges around that, or is that a, a bonus, you, you mean your, your catchment area is a lot more diverse than other maybe clubs? Both, like you mentioned, uh, for sure it's the case. Um, I think after Dubai, uh, Brussels is the most metropolitan uh, city in the world, so very, very uh, melting pot of all kinds of uh, ethnicities, cultures, religions, languages. So I think it's a big benefit, not only uh, sportive-wise, uh, but also I think we can learn a lot from each other in, 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 uh, around the globe. And the fact that they do, as from a young age, makes them a better person or more multicultural person in life, so that's a good thing. Logically, if you've got a melting pot of all kinds of people that need to live together uh, even more than they live at home because they spend a lot of time here uh, during the week, sometimes it, it, it's not so uh, easy. But, but um, I think often the kids are, are not really posing problems because they, they have the same passion for playing football. And uh, I think it's a big advantage because as from a young age, they learn to speak both languages in Belgium, so Dutch and French, and, and throughout the academy because they, they, they play tournaments, uh, international tournaments. As from the older age group, sometimes they, they have foreign players coming in and they, they also learn English. So, so most of the guys, when, when they're 18 year old, they can speak three languages, which is a big benefit in, in, in life. And when we, when we drove here from the uh, from the train station, we noticed a very like working class area, or many working class areas, which we came through Brussels from that area. Do you think that's a help as well? I mean, we talk about South London in South London in England having like a hotbed of talent because it's a very those working class areas where maybe you know players are in the cages playing football a lot and have mm -hmm. like hotbeds of talent if you like. Do you, do you have to think the same? I have asked this question because I was at a tournament once and with the head of recruitment of Vyax, and he said oh, he was very jealous of. The um, the melting pot of Belgium, of mm -hmm. Brussels, particularly because you mm -hmm. have all these you know these cages and these street players and lots of these natural street talent coming in more maybe than other places of the country might have. There is no right answer to that. It's 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 true that it's a melting pot and and logically in all kinds of uh, metropole cities, you have these kinds of areas where uh, a lot of children, luckily, still play on the streets. Mm -hmm. eh? and not always on, on their PlayStations. But I would say if, if today uh, we look at our age groups and, and we look at the faces, it, it, there is no clear um, red line in if you have these characteristics, you will play for Anderlecht. Some of the guys, uh, they come out of uh, families that, that, that have difficulties in life huh? and that, that, that are quite poor uh, maybe. Uh, some of the guys come from, I would call it upper class, but, but here in the academy there is no upper class. Everybody wears the same jersey, everybody is treated in the same way. We speak both languages. If we, if we give an exercise, we do it in both languages. So the, the, the only thing they have in common, that's, that's the right thing, is the passion for football. And they're all eager to one day become professional play at the highest level because when they dream, if you talk to them about their dream, they will, some of them will quote Anderlecht, uh, but the, most of them will dream ab about the biggest uh, clubs in the world. So, uh, but we, we try to transit them first in, in, in our first team, but there's no, there's no, uh, after 17 years, there's no, there's no manual that, 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 that is available to, to find the best talents in, 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 in Belgium, but you, you try to be vigilant and, and, and logically being in the center of the con country, uh, being in a city uh, about a population about, I think, 1.3 million, it helps, but there is no, there's no clear uh, guideline. Do you, when do you start or do you start recruiting from outside Belgium? Do you do regional in Europe? Do you try and recruit players from other parts of Europe for the, for the club? I would say at, at least as possible. Uh, and it's not because I'm against foreigners or whatsoever, but... Um, I think we have the big luck of having a lot of talent here in Belgium. Belgium is, is a small country. You've got the ethnic, ethnicities, uh, so a melting pot. You also have got the, the fact that Belgium is a real football country. We have a population about, I think, 11, 12 million. 
but I think there are 550,000 members in the FA. So if you look at it uh, percentage-wise, it's, it's really it's, it's the number one sport and everybody's keen about football and, and cycling, but, uh, but football is really dominant. So those are already parameters uh, that help uh, that, that, that the average level is, is quite high. And then I think uh, also our FA took some ini initiatives to, to develop football in a good way, also on the grassroots level. So our, our own domestic level is more than sufficient to, to have a decent, decent starting level to, to develop uh, elite players. On the other hand, uh, sometimes, uh, but you need to take into account logically the FIFA regulations, UEFA regulations regarding transfers. Sometimes we do, we do transfers uh, from young, promising European uh, guys. We have Christian Ernstadt uh, coming out of Norway um, that we detected with our, with our scouting system and that, that, that are, is now playing in our first, first team. But I would say those are exceptions. I think, all, I think also uh, financially we don't have the, the, same, uh, the same power as, as big European clubs, mainly also in England, but now with, with, with Brexit maybe it changed, uh, changed a little bit. But So I think we focus on, on Belgium and exceptionally it could be of some interest if they play against us with their national team, U team. But hey, there are no uh, exceptions. Eh? I think most of the guys, if they are detected by us, they will also be detected in their home, home uh, countries. And uh, everybody is now protecting talent with contracts. Uh, so it's not our main focus. How do you differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself from the other big Belgian clubs? What do you say to parents to say, why should I choose Anderlecht for my child rather than Genk or Bruges or one of the other clubs? What's the difference? Um, I think there are the, the, the sites or the clubs that you mentioned are very good academies, so, so there's a mutual respect for sure. Eh? Uh, but, but one of the parameters is tradition. Uh, I think we have a proven track record of, of, of producing <laughs> not only qu quality but also quantity quantity of, of numerous of professional players. Um, I think the main difference is that we, we tackle this as an individual sport. So, so like I mentioned, before recruiting a guy, we have several talks with the family. We do analysis on, on, on school level, family, all those kinds of things in order to, when he signs, we have a clear individual plan on how to tackle school matters how is everything organized in a logistic level can he still live at at home or does he need to integrate a guest family or a border school we went went to visit those kind of facilities we have per two age groups we have one pedagogue taking care of school uh, really being there at the school with them in the study uh, being in the the teachers' meetings, and, and so we try to tackle that in a real, real individual way. And I think that's the, I would call it the secret sauce. But again, there is, there is no, uh, there is no uh, secret formula. It's a matter of indiv individualizing. It's a matter of hard work and commitment on both sides and being transparent. But uh, uh, a successful career never goes like this. It's always... And we have now a guy who was in our under 15s, he playing really well, making good progress. Now he has a very severe uh, knee injury. Then, yeah, logically it goes down. And, and I, I think you need to be there for the guys, certainly in the, in the moments where there are the moments of drama or, or in the bad moments. And when there are, when everything is good, you need to also be there to put their feet on the ground and saying, oh, uh, remember again what we said, uh, school, football, family, that's what we promised, that's what we, what we uh, wanted to, to, to achieve together. But this is, this is uh, also a domain. Football is, is so popular. Uh, once they start playing for the national team, sometimes they don't dream dream of Anderlecht in the first team. They say, okay, Anderlecht is just an intermediate 
level. Uh, we want to go for City and Barcelona and Real Madrid. And it's, it's good to dream, but keep feet on the ground and, and a staircase. It's, it's not only one stair, it's several stairs that you need to take. And we are there to, to, to guide them. Okay. Kevin, thank you. Thank you.